Welcome to this video on Colfax RPA. My name is Jesper Scherpenhauser and in this video I want to talk about intelligent screen automation or how I stopped worrying and learned to love RPA in Citrix environments. This was actually a topic that was uh, requested a couple of times and I'm really happy to now spend some time on this channel to talk about that. And the reason is, is that you do see Citrix and other, well, virtualization technologies uh, are getting more and more common nowadays. And the thing then becomes is, how do we then automate on top of that? How do we leverage robots that could also automate against those virtualized uh, applications? And the challenge there, of course, is, is that when you have a Citrix session open or something like that, um, you're not actually interacting with that application. No, you're actually interacting with a stream of an application that's running somewhere else, but you're not actually interacting with that UI. And this, of course, poses a challenge uh, to, to RPA. And before we actually dive into ISA, how it works, how you can use it, and what the actual benefits are, I'd like to quickly just recap on some desktop automation uh, things and talk about why Citrix uh, posed a challenge and how we then address that as early on as Colfax RPA 10.3, which was released two and a half years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and how we can now leverage those applications with the same ease as applications that were running natively on Windows. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm going to grab my environment and I've got two machines up and running. I have my Windows 10 environment that we're going to automate against. And as you can see, I have an application open um, that we can easily interact with, with buttons. I've got a table there, text boxes, more buttons. And what we saw with some of the earlier RPA solutions out there, um, the ones that really came from desktop macro recording and all of those, so the more classic RPA solutions, is that they would, would always automate based on X and Y coordinates, so click there, type this, then click there, X and Y this, and the challenge that posed is if something changed in the environment, uh, for instance, I would maximize this application or I would move this pop-up from here to there, is that the robot would stop working. So when we introduced a desktop automation in Colfax RPA 10 years ago, is that we said, well, we don't want to emulate that. What we actually want to do is we want to do something that is more resilient to change. We want it to be more intelligent. So what we then did is we used what's known as the Windows Automation API, which is actually Microsoft Windows exposing UI elements in what we now call an automation tree. So if something changes, the robot would not just simply look for X and Y coordinates, but they would actually look for the element on the screen that it's supposed to interact with, making it more resilient, making it more flexible. So let me just show you how that works. I'm going to insert a desktop automation workflow step in this robot. I have a desktop robot here. It's called Citrix. And I'm going to use my mapping to my Windows 10 environment that we were just talking about and we just had a look at, actually. So for those of you who haven't uh, seen this part of uh, Colfax RPA, I would recommend to look into some of my more desktop automation focused videos or have a look at the, uh, the tutorials on Colfax.com or maybe even our learning cloud. And what you actually see here is I'm going to just going to immediately go to the application here is if I click any sort of element, you'll start to see this, well, this hierarchy or the tree beneath that. And this is again, this is that representation of the Windows Automation API. You can immediately see that we have um, the, the elements on this screen already available to us. So if something changes, if it changes around, we can just say, we'll just look for the header 
with the name item description and so if it changes if it changed the order or something else it is well it's resilient to those kind of changes if i'm looking at the OK button here, you can see that we have a name for that. We have a specific identifier. So even if this changes around, it knows where to click there. So the robot is not looking for X and Y coordinates. It's looking for these elements. So what then happens if we are not interacting with a Windows application, but we are actually looking at a stream of an application like in that Citrix case? Well, unfortunately, I don't have a Citrix environment uh, here with me, but what I do have is I have something similar. I've taken a screenshot of my, well, of my system actually, and I'm gonna put that in full screen mode. You can see that here from the uh, from the location there. And as you can see, I, cannot, I can't do anything here else than just interact with this, uh, um, with this image. But if I then switch to this environment and I do a quick re uh, refresh, you'll start to see that if we look here, we have nothing available to us in that automation tree. It says, okay, we're looking at the Earthen view or Citrix environment right there. But if we then say, okay, well, let's switch this to ISA, to Intelligent Screen Automation, which is indeed our patented uh, technology that's used our well our decades of experience in machine learning and artificial intelligence to actually rebuild that tree so what we've done well not me personally but our R&D team is we have used well millions and billions of samples to train a neural network so we now have taught Colfax RPA to actually use computer vision to identify all of these elements on the screen. Uh, so we actually built or rebuilt that Windows automation tree just based on looking at this picture. And this is then of course done at real time. So if you look at that something, it's gonna be changing all the time so you can easily interact with that. And instead of then having all of those elements, we have found all of those elements again, and we have identified all the logic within that. So it actually is able to recognize, oh, this is actually a, uh, a row there within this overall table. So all of that logic has been rebuilt by that artificial intelligence even all of those buttons. So again, still, the robot will become more, much more resilient as when it would be using X and Y coordinates, which was all, only the, uh, the other, only other thing that you can do if you were interacting with an, a Citrix environment. This actually makes automating a Citrix um, uh, application almost as easy as a native Windows application. So, it's no longer something that you would need to try to work around. No, you can just easily do it pretty, pretty straightforward. And this is probably one of the biggest features in Colfax RPA when you compare that to some of the other RPA solutions out there that still need to rely either on X and Y coordinates or where you need to do uh, tabbing through an application. No. Here we make it as easy as possible because of that uh, neural network that we've trained, because of our our own OCR engine, Colfax OmniPage, and this is going to make your life that much easier. So you've seen how easy it is to teach a robot how to interact with something that it doesn't know anything about it other than the actual picture that you have. Um, this is, of course, extremely relevant when you have security constraints in place that force you to use Citrix because of course the the best thing of course still is well interact and have the Colfax de uh, desktop automation servers running as close to the application as possible but if for whatever reason and typically that's security or policies uh, you can then use intelligent screen automation to build your robots and start delivering real value to your organizations this has been um, a rather short video i really hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me drop me a line and as always i would like to ask you to like this video subscribe and if you have any thoughts put your comments down there as well 
I love hearing back from the community. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Cheers.